He's going there last night. He was there. The member for Grosley. Mr. Speaker, I feel humble as I rise to make yet another contribution on behalf of the people of Grosley to a budget debate. As such, Mr. Speaker, please grant me leave as I once again thank the people of Grosley for bestowing their confidence in me as their parliamentary representative and for their unwavering patience over the last year due to the many challenges we faced in our communities. Let me take this opportunity to remind them that unlike my predecessor, I am not hiding, but I am buried under the stack of work that was not done before that I must complete on their behalf. Let me say this again. I want to take this opportunity to remind the people of Grosley that I am not hiding. You're a big man. But I am buried under the stack of work that was not done before that I must complete on their behalf, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if they decide to look closely, they will see that I am right there with them, Mr. Speaker. On the bus stops, near the supermarkets, in front of their houses, on the playing fields, wherever they may go, town hall meetings, I am there right with them. And so, Mr. Speaker, I will continue to do just that. Mr. Speaker, let me thank the Almighty God who has blessed me with this desire, with the ambition and temperament to represent the people of Grosley. Well, I thank the Most High. I always thank my loving mother, Caroline Kazemi, who has been with me from negative nine months and 39 years later, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me also thank my staff for the work in the last year, including Meander Jayab, Nicola Duvain, Sharik Smith, who has joined us this year, Mr. Speaker. And let me thank quickly, just so that I ensure that I get all that I need for Grosley, the Honorable Member for Castries East, who has bestowed great confidence in me, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the presentation presented by the Honorable Prime Minister on this year's estimates remind me of a saying that you often hear when you watch basketball and cricket and any analysis, any analysis with statistics. Mr. Speaker, there's a saying, women lie, men lie, but numbers don't, Mr. Speaker. And the truth is, it's Women lie, men lie, but numbers don't. Mr. Speaker, the naysayers of everything this government has done say whatever comes to mind to satisfy their like-minded simpletons. But today, Mr. Speaker, there are a couple of things that are indisputable. For the first time in years, Mr. Speaker, the St. Lucian economy experienced a budget surplus, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, budget surplus of $29.5 million. Mr. Speaker, for the financial year 2023-2024, we are expecting an even bigger surplus, Mr. Speaker. This indicates that we are able to pay our interest and that mechanisms we may need to employ to finance our activities are palatable to our investors. Mr. Speaker, Women lie, men lie, but numbers don't. 
Mr. Speaker, on the wages and salaries, this government, in this hard guava season, paid all civil servant salaries, Mr. Speaker. Not only did they pay the wages and salaries, but Mr. Speaker, the civil servants were treated to their back pay, Mr. Speaker. Facts. Numbers don't lie, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are also going to see a total revenue accumulated by this country being nearly a billion dollars over what was projected, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, you can add to the saying, women lie, men lie, pastors lie, priests lie, Bopé lie, Belme lie, but numbers don't, Mr. Speaker. We said to the people of St. Lucia that it would take at least the first two years of this new administration to clean up the mess that was left behind by the previous government. And though we are not quite there yet, we are heading in the right direction once again, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, as it pertains to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I will say that this ministry, like our financial indicators, are heading in the right direction. It is quite obvious that to develop sports, we need to ensure that we have quality, well-maintained sporting facilities, and you would agree. And so, as a ministry, we have embarked on a systematic approach to the rehabilitation of our sporting infrastructure. And so, on the head 54, on the rehabilitation of playing fields, we'll see that the Minda Phillip Park has commenced the rehabilitation work after five plus years of no attention, Mr. Speaker. And a doctrine that indicated to the people of Marsha and Tuwuj and Cast Resist. What's in the Bell Rose doctrine? A doctrine with a bell and a rose. And Fortuners and a Doha. That they did not deserve the best playing field. We are seeing that the works have commenced. Mr. Speaker, Bellevue. In the view Fort North, Mr. Speaker, the signs are up and we're expecting that this work will commence this week for the people of view Fort North, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we saw in the financial year attention to the Sufre Mini Stadium. We saw attention for the Cicero playing field, the Otaba Court in Ancillary Canneries, the Deramo Court in Grosley. We saw the Goodlands Court the Cicero Court, Larry Seuss Denry playing field getting some attention, the Corinth playing field getting some attention, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as we said, the Mindo Philip Park, it was left in a historic fashion, Mr. Speaker, a park that is used to develop all aspects of sports in St. Lucia. But Mr. Speaker, very proud that this facility will be ready for the opening of Jazz under this Minister of Finance, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we continue to work, Mr. Speaker, in the best interest of our people. In the new financial year, we'll undertake work on several other sporting facilities. Some of those facilities include the Marigo playing field, Mr. Speaker. The Philip Masley grounds, Mr. Speaker. The gardens in Central Castries, Mr. Speaker. Hub of talent, Mr. Speaker. The Labry playing field, the Wen playing field, the Grand Ravine playing field will be given attention this financial year, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I said earlier, the Cicero Works has already, well, we just planting grass. <laughs> We're planting the grass on the Cicero playing field, so it should be ready very, very soon for the people of Castries South. But Mr. Speaker, perhaps the biggest project to be undertaken in this new financial year is the commencement of the National Aquatic Center. Mr. Speaker, I must say, Mr. Speaker, that this project has been a long time coming. As the Minister for Infrastructure once said, it was first conceived in 1987, Mr. Speaker. Under his stewardship, as a Minister of Youth Development and Sports. As a matter of fact, I poked him once and said, that means you looked like me when you became Minister of Youth Development and Sports. And so these days I see him with his green smoothie, taking in his vitamins, 
And I just remind myself that this is what the member for Castries North used to be. And so we continue to poke each other as we embark on a healthy lifestyle, Mr. Speaker. But he will be happy to note that the Leclerc playing field will also be getting some attention this year, Mr. Speaker. The Moshi playing field, Mr. Speaker, has been underrepresented, underfacilitated for so many years, Mr. Speaker. And we know that we have so much talent from that lovely community. And finally, we will be seeing some infrastructural development at the Moshi playing field, the Enchipo playing field near the Leon S. Comprehensive Secondary School, and Mr. Speaker, the VG playing field, Mr. Speaker, in Central Castries. Mr. Speaker, I got involved in sports at a very tender age. And I remember very early people were always saying, the VG playing field is in such a central location. And I remember asking very early on, why don't we have lights at the VG playing field? And that must have been in 1992 or 1994, somebody explaining to me that it was too close to the airport at VG. And Mr. Speaker, this explanation festered and festered and festered until one day I decided, let me call SLASPA, let me call the relevant authorities considering that Annas Vale and some of the other facilities in the region are right next to airports. Lo and behold, Mr. Speaker, we can put lights on the VG playing field, Mr. Speaker. And the instructions will do not put the lights facing upwards. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it simply meant that the technology had already developed to allow planes to land and take off as long as lights are pointed in the right direction. And furthermore, Mr. Speaker, who points a light for a playing field in the direction of, <laughs> of the sky? And so finally, our development programs in Central Castries, Mr. Speaker, will be implemented beyond 6 p.m., Mr. Speaker. An area where we know requires all that attention, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we'll continue on the head 54 to do the remedial works that we need. Mr. Speaker, the George Odlem Stadium in Viewfort, in Viewfort, Marigold Playing Field, Philip Master Grounds, the Gardens, the Library Playing Field, Wen Playing Field, Grand Ravine Playing Field, Mr. Speaker. I'll read it again for my colleagues so that they understand that we do work all around St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to do the work that we are required to do, Mr. Speaker, for our people. The George Adam Stadium, Mr. Speaker, as you know, has been in abeyance due to the presence of the hospital. Therefore, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be monitoring the construction works at the St. Jude Hospital while they develop the appropriate strategy, guided, of course, by the experts for the recommissioning of the George Adam National Stadium to a full-fledged sports venue, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in addition to providing and maintaining facilities, Mr. Speaker, we've provided as a ministry equipment and the basic necessities to a number of playing facilities. Mr. Speaker, Chozel has been a hub of cricket talent, Mr. Speaker. And so when we had our discussions, we decided that this would be a perfect area for nets to be erected for cricket development for a bowling machine to be sourced for cricket development and the requisite uh, equipment given to the people of Sozel Saltibus, Mr. Speaker. And so, and so, Mr. Speaker, under this ministry, we don't discriminate. We don't say because you're in opposition, you don't get the requisite attention, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, another community that is rife with cricket development is the Devawa community, Mr. Speaker, in Babuno. And so, Mr. Speaker, this lovely area, Mr. Speaker, will be laced with the basic necessities for further cricket development, including stands and a light and lighting system for the people of Babuno, Mr. Speaker. And so, we will have more discussion on our alternative lighting program during the policy debate as we ensure that solar lights is the direction we are going to become sustainable sports fanatics in the global stage, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, under wages and salaries, you will see there is an increase in this year's budget to facilitate expenses for two Cuban coaches as we continue to partner with the Cuban government to improve athletic performance in this country. Mr. Speaker, the sport of boxing, they've benefited tremendously, Mr. Speaker, from this. We have a burgeoning program in Viewfort South, Mr. Speaker. Almost 25 boxers, young boxers, in the community of Viewfort under a program and tutelage of a Cuban coach, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, if you've been following, you would say that this augurs well for the next generation of national boxers. As we know, the South has a history of producing excellent athletes. And this is what we expect from the intervention of this Cuban coach. Mr. Speaker, the Cuban coach is working well with former national boxers and, of course, coach Conrad Frederick, who has an excellent program at the VG, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the coaching unit also includes 21 coaches in the field of table tennis, boxing, cricket, football, volleyball, netball, and track and field. And Mr. Speaker, we'll go into more of this during the policy debate, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the ministry has also employed under wages, Mr. Speaker, and salaries, Earl Bollock, Jean, and Stuart Charles for an emerging athlete program, Mr. Speaker, to develop the next cadre of footballers, Mr. Speaker. And if you follow St. Lucia and football, St. Lucia is continuing an unbeaten streak, defeating Dominica just a few nights ago, three goals to one, as we continue to top our group in the Nations League, Mr. Speaker. And so it's expected that players such as Shiloh will benefit from having the best football coaches in this program, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, over the last financial year, a novel and exciting addition to the Ministry's National Sports Program was the introduction of an alternative sports officer, Mr. Speaker. In July 2022, we employed the officer, Mr. Craig Gustav, and we saw during the season, December 13th to February 22nd, close to 300 individuals from across the region coming to St. Lucia to participate in some of our alternative sports events. This includes mountain um, cross, um, cross feet, this includes chess, this includes a number of other activities including Moto X, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we saw close to 100 young schoolgoers participating in the HRDC in Grosley in the National Chess Championship, Mr. Speaker. Packed crowd, parents from all over St. Lucia in full support. And Mr. Speaker, moving forward, Mr. Speaker, we continue, there's a lot to say in terms of the development of sports, Mr. Speaker, but I will stop here, Mr. Speaker, for, 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 for sports development, because I want to ensure that I give Grosley a fair share. Because today, Mr. Speaker, I have to ensure that I represent three constituencies in one, Mr. Speaker. And so, the speech technically needs to be three hours, if permitted, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under the Ministry of the Department of Youth Development, Mr. Speaker, under Head 64, this financial year presents an opportunity for young people to come to the table to change the course of this great nation. 54, sorry. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to announce that my ministry in partnership with the National Youth Council have committed to ensuring that another legacy emerges from the timely recognition of 2023 as the year of the youth, Mr. Speaker. And so, the ministry in partnership with youth agencies will focus on safety, security, and peace, where the aim is to empower young people and communities as agents of peace and safe national coexistence. Mr. Speaker, we must drive home the message. The young people are the positive agents of peace. I think those opposite can agree that for sure, we as a people need a significant investment in our young people in the communities, Mr. Speaker. And so, in celebration of a year of a youth, we will endeavor to roll out programs and activities 
that will lead to an awareness that this year we arrest this scourge and that young people will lead this evolution of peace in our beautiful nation. My ministry, Mr. Speaker, our Ministry of Youth Development is forging partnerships with national, with the regional and international organizations, including the private sector and faith-based organizations for resource mobilization for this year's celebration and, of course, beyond. Our mission, Mr. Speaker, is to pursue, pursue the goal of safety, security, and, of course, peaceful coexistence. And you will see this happening as the youth take center stage in debates, song, dance, and other mechanisms to address the issue of crime and violence prevention and reduction. We are privileged to collaborate with the Development Alternative Inc., DAI, and partner on Youth Resilience, Inclusion, and Empowerment, WIRI, the program funded by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, and of course, this is a five-year project that will strengthen communities and family systems in initiatives that will improve responses to gender-based violence, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we will speak further on this during the policy debate. This, along with the completion of the National Youth Policy, Mr. Speaker, and the Draft Youth Policy Action Plan will be taken under, will be done this financial year. Mr. Speaker, I am determined that these documents gain approval for the highest political office. And in this document, you will see some of the themes to energize, energize the inclusive participation of young people and youth partners to celebrate the contributions of young people, empower young people by building their capacity for leadership, envision a renewed commonwealth that reflects the views and aspirations of young people, and engage development partners to increase investment in creating an enabling environment for youth empowerment. So Mr. Speaker, we know that we need to continue to engage our young people, and those agencies continue to present themselves to us as a government to provide the funding and the mechanisms to get into the communities. Mr. Speaker, youth unemployment remains a worrisome issue for policymakers, and of course, all of St. Lucia. As a government, and in collaboration with other stakeholders, we are making strides to aggressively address persistent social phenomena such as this. The ministry launched the Skilled 758 app, a school Saint Lucia, a Skilled St. Lucia in February this year. So the Skilled St. Lucia web browser and mobile app, it provides a user-friendly feature. It's a rich platform which will be easily accessed by Android and iOS. Mr. Speaker, initially we had some technical difficulties with the app, but I can now tell St. Lucia that it is readily available on both platforms for their usage. It will assist in finding needed jobs, employees and services within a geographical location, and also nationally it will improve what persons can now access in terms of getting employment. So Mr. Speaker, our young people on the blocks can take this app right on their fingertips and gain access to what is going on, provide information on what jobs that they may be interested in so we can further provide assistance. Mr. Speaker, there is still another route that we are pursuing to relieve the unemployment situation among our young people. And just earlier we had a conversation, I had a conversation with a parent who has a Form 5 student who is doing well. But she's not sure whether or not she'll get the financing to send the child to Sir Arthur Lewis or to continue the education. And she asked, what is left for her to do when that child leaves secondary school? You may also ask, a child leaving Sir Arthur Lewis Community College may have had all the success but no ability to play for, pay for university. What happens to this child? And so, Mr. Speaker, the School Leavers Program or the National Service Program is a labor market intervention to provide opportunities for young people to utilize their skills, talents, and expertise in the workplace, preferably close to the community where they reside. And so with that program, we will be able to provide some employment for those school leavers, Mr. Speaker. So Mr. Speaker, 
With the efforts to counteract the social ills and provide viable alternatives to youth, the Safe Spaces Initiative was developed, Mr. Speaker. This project, it fosters a safe and supportive environment to facilitate the integration of programs and services that are geared towards positive youth development. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry has earmarked the Old Reunion School to convert as a safe space, as well as the conversion of the unused building in Denry South. Mr. Speaker, on a study in Canada last year, we witnessed firsthand the importance of safe spaces. Young people need a place for them to have their cathartic interactions with each other, for them to talk, for them to be able to come up with ideas and develop different skills and attitudes that can further develop the entire community. And so the ministry is working on ensuring that we have as many safe spaces for the young people. Mr. Speaker, the positive youth development par paradigm is what underpins this Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. The ministry values young people. We acknowledge that the youth are a vital resource and are critical for our future. And so, Mr. Speaker, we are inviting all of St. Lucia next week to the Derek Walcott Square. Let me just put that plug in as we kickstart our Youth Month activities. The theme will be empowering young people for peace, unity, and a safer society. So, Mr. Speaker, how do all of these activities that we see in this year's estimates of revenue and expenditure, how do these finances develop the people of Grosley, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, we see on the head 46, community tourism, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as somebody who was born and raised in the community of Grosley, we saw during the year 2022-2023, we saw the reintroduction of Grosley Friday night. And I say at every opportunity I get to interface with the member for Castro South, that the first community tourism initiative in St. Lucia in the 1970s was the Grosley Friday night. And so, Mr. Speaker, I remember how saddened I was when I saw the politics play out, Mr. Speaker, when we decided that we were going to reopen Grosley Friday night. When my team in the constituency considered what we discovered about the new variant, we decided to lead the charge and speak to the vendors on how to do it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our people in Grosley, they were suffering. Mr. Speaker, would you believe that there were people on Facebook, there were people in the community, there were people on the playing fields, Mr. Speaker, literally asking and begging to see an upsurge in the coronavirus at that time because we reopened Grosley Friday night, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, the politics so ingrained in their blood that they wished to have seen it fail in the community, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, they said people would be dying in the streets. They said baby was mad. They said vendors could survive for another year. So why reopen Grosley Friday night? But Mr. Speaker, as the parliamentary rep, I had to stand up for them. I was tired of them meeting me and asking me for small tokens asking for money to pay bills that piled up due to COVID-19, a water bill here in excess of, of $2,000, electricity bill in excess of $1,000, books for their children, basic groceries that we know the little cachada from selling at Friday night would afford them. Mr. Speaker, a lot of people don't know this, but it's not just the vendors who benefit from grocery Friday night, Mr. Speaker. It's not just the restaurants and bars, Mr. Speaker, but ordinary persons in the small plywood houses that you see in Grosley, they benefit from Grosley Friday night. The one person, the one house selling ice, selling a big bucket of ice for $20, who sometimes on one Friday night makes in excess of $100, would amass close to $400 to $500 at the end of the month, Mr. Speaker. 
It may not be a lot for some people, but it pays a bill, Mr. Speaker. It buys groceries, Mr. Speaker. The neighbor selling kerosene. And I have first-hand experience, because up to a day like today, Caroline Kazimi still sells her kerosene on Maritere Street. Can make in excess of 100 for that Friday night, Mr. Speaker. And 400 at the end of the month, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I get into that. Mr. Speaker, they may not know this, but the individuals that are selling coals a few houses down, the coals that they wanted to tax, Mr. Speaker, the same coals that they wanted to tax, Mr. Speaker, these individuals could sell in excess of $100 to $150 worth of coals for a Friday night and make $500, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I could not, in good conscience, just, conscience just sit back, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the barber shops, the nail shops, the hair salons, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Starry, with his, if he's selling his wholesale, Mr. Speaker, employing two or three people, uh, three people, Mr. Speaker. We could not sit back and do nothing, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, I had a conversation with my mom, and I could not understand why Grosley Friday Night meant so much to me subconsciously. Mr. Speaker, about 39, 39 years ago, it was at Grosley Friday Night, while my mommy love Caroline Kazimi as a vendor was selling with me in a belly, I decided it was time to come out, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> While she was preparing the coals, she might have bought a couple of blocks down and the kerosene to light it up, Mr. Speaker. It was on a grossly Friday night I decided I'm coming out right now, Mr. Speaker. And any time you meet her, she will give you the story. And so, Mr. Speaker, she had to leave the grill. She had to get some assistance. Another time, vehicles were not as regular as they are now in 1984. And Mr. Speaker, shortly after Friday night, Kenson Kazabi was born, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, how can I sit back, Mr. Speaker, and let these people who use this very same mechanism suffer, Mr. Speaker? And so, Mr. Speaker, we decided we had to return Grosley Friday night, and uh, I had to go to the compassionate member for Castries East, the Honorable Prime Minister, and explain that due to COVID-19, that none of these vendors had a basic startup. And so, with the intervention of SSDF, we were able to get $350 for each vendor to go buy the basic necessities to kickstart their micro-enterprise, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, these are things that are not known in the community. When I see and I hear some of the rhetoric, Mr. Speaker, I sometimes wonder, do they understand the compassion and love that this parliamentary have for the basic people of Grosley, every single individual, Mr. Speaker? So for the new year, Mr. Speaker, I have said that this tourism product, which brings thousands and thousands every year to Grosley, we need to have some additional assistance. We know that we've had the upsurge in crime, and so security has been some of the things, uh, one particular thing that we need additional support for, Mr. Speaker. And so I'll be speaking to the minister to see what we can do to help the vendors further. Mr. Speaker, under, also under um, community tourism, there was another aspect of Grosley Life that needed my immediate attention as it pertained to ensuring economic activity returned in a big way to Grosley. And that was the Grosley Jetty. And a lot of people do not understand the significance of the Grosley Jetty, Mr. Speaker. This is where a number of persons who would use the option of using the sea from Ancillary, from Canaries, from Soufre, to attend Grosley Friday night. Some of the individuals actually transport other individuals to Grosley on a Friday night. And this benefits all the people in Grosley, Mr. Speaker, the economic activities. Mr. Speaker, there are some people in Grosley who have amnesia, selective amnesia. Mr. Speaker, for almost five years, the jetty was in disrepair, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, within six months of being in government, Mr. Speaker, 
Within six months of being in government, we were able to secure the services of private sector individuals to commence the jetty, Mr. Speaker. We had to deal with a lot of logistics, Mr. Deputy Speaker, for now. Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and so, Mr. Speaker, after we had the verbal agreement on fixing the jetty, Mr. Speaker, we had some glitches, and it took a little while. And Mr. Speaker, the same people who said nothing for the five years the jetty was not in existence, the same people were going around the community talking about this government and doing nothing. Look at the state of the jetty. Look at the state of the jetty. Mr. Speaker, we all know that in certain communities, you have private sector individuals. Larry Shiriki, owner of Hobbies. Cabot in the community. And so, Mr. Speaker, this is not new to engage private individuals for a community project. And so we did. And they could have done it for four years, and they did not. The fifth year came, and they did not. And so I'm happy to announce that the Grosile Jetty is back and ready to roll, Mr. Speaker. After just 18 months in government, we have a Grosile Jetty that our people can be proud of, Mr. Speaker. A jetty that is equipped with lights, Mr. Speaker. Brand new lights, Mr. Speaker. A symbol of our commitment to the people of Grosile, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I'm very happy that we can continue to develop certain aspects of Grosley. Mr. Speaker, the Grosley Recreational Park, Mr. Speaker. The people of Grosley know all too well what arrangements were going on at Pigeon Island. Mr. Speaker, there was a time just before the election, all of a sudden we saw a structure just erected at Pigeon Island. One closer to the Bay Street Bridge, one towards the middle, and one next to the Pigeon Island National Park, all of a sudden. Mr. Speaker, I remember going on Bay Street and asking, what, what, what's happening? I was saying that it was for a particular person's son, and that the restaurant will be at the bottom, and the bar will be on top, and then a particular person will be managing it. And I was wondering, what, is that how governance work? And so, Mr. Speaker, Lo and behold, the election is called, and I get into government. And we have always had our desires to develop that particular area. And so, contacted the DCA, just to get an idea of what was happening. Zero DCA approval. Zero planning approval. Zero. And so, Mr. Speaker, I had to wonder what was going on. As I said earlier, I am not hiding, but buried under the work that was left for me to do, that was not done. We had to recommence the process from start to get it done right. And so I can gladly say that in conversation with the Minister of Tourism, the funds are there, DCA approvals, check, planning approval, check, and we will see the commencement of the Grosley Recreational Park in this coming financial year for the people of Grosley. Mr. Speaker, still on the community tourism, Mr. Speaker. There was another issue that we had to jump back into to get done for the people of Grosley. Mr. Speaker, Moshi Jazz. Moshi Jazz represents one of the premier activities during the month of May in terms of having economic activities for Moshi. Mr. Speaker, it started under the member for Sufre. And of course, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, because of course of the lack of ideas, the lack of desire, the lack of ambition, it was stopped. And so, Mr. Speaker, I am happy to announce that the Moshi Music Acreole will be back come May 2023, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thousands of dollars are made by our vendors, and we're expecting that on May 9th to have the likes of Boo Inkson, to have a number of other individuals in the community to enjoy the cultural capital of St. Lucia. And I know the member for Viewford North don't like to hear that, but Moshi, the likes of Secret Band, 
and some of the nicest people in the world is the cultural capital of St. Lucia. And I'm sure Merlene Nelson is smiling from A to A as we speak, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, under Head 43, Department of Infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, under the Ministry of Infrastructure, Disaster Risk and Response Management, we saw an estimate of $13.3 million, a revised budget of $14.4 million for 2022-2023. Let me take this opportunity to thank the Ministry of Infrastructure, the Minister of Infrastructure for their interventions during the difficult times the people of Grosley face as a result of the travesty of November 6, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we were there as a government for our people, Mr. Speaker. I was literally on the ground as it happened in Corinth, Marisol, Bois all throughout the community. Mr. Speaker, we never left our people stranded. Let me thank the Honorable Minister of Finance, the Minister for Local Government, and the Minister of Education for their swift interventions on the ground in the immediate aftermath of this event, Mr. Speaker. Full team, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when events like that happen, you understand why you become a member and you stay true to being part of a team of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, they dropped everything and they came to the community, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, this Minister of Finance has dished out hundreds of thousands of dollars in aid to the people of these areas. While many more persons are still wailing from this disaster, we'll continue to provide the assistance to those we have not been able to assist yet. So we're asking for a little patience because we know people are not through this disaster as yet. But Mr. Speaker, under disaster risk and response, I must say that I fear the event which occurred on that day will repeat itself if the mitigation works that is needed desperately and not done immediately. We have a number of rivers, including the Bonte River, the Corinth River, and these rivers have not been desilted, Mr. Speaker. We have walls that came down that protect homes that have not been repaired. We have retaining walls and Gibeon baskets that are needed in Asu Canal, Corinth, Rivermeter, Piat, Monier, Moshi, Degazo, Flamboyant Drive, Inglewood, and Bonte, Mr. Speaker. This intervention is not a want. We need immediate intervention. They are not just a desire. These interventions are desperately needed. So I'll say again to the Minister of Infrastructure, we are grateful for all the support, but we are not quite out of the wood yet, Mr. Speaker. And so while I'm on Head 43, during the financial year 2022-2023, we found it extremely difficult as a government to focus our limited resources in infrastructure. So, Speaker, I remember a cabinet meeting where the Prime Minister came in very early on and he explained to the cabinet of ministers that out of every $100 at that time that came to this government, $67 of it, $67, went into recurrent expenditure. Paying civil servants, rent, bills, 67, very early. I remember he explained that a further 20 out of every 100 went into debt servicing, which meant for us as a government that $87 out of every $100 that came into this country, we could not touch or even see. And I remember sitting in that cabinet meeting and saying, but Kimanye, we have a year about Sishemaya. How am I going to do anything about the 57 roads that require interventions in Grosley when only $13 out of the $100 was there for 17 constituencies? And so, Mr. Speaker, I left that cabinet meeting. I remember it was after 8. I went home, 
I took a shower and it was a stark reality that I needed to communicate to the people of Grosely that I am unable to give them carpet roads throughout the constituency at this time. Add meetings with Emita. Member for Grosely, we have 15 minutes left. Kidding. Guys, I need, I need more time. Eh? I need more time. I need more time. Definitely need more time. Give me half an hour. Mr. Speaker, Member, I'd like to. Oh, sorry. Member, for dinner enough, you wait for the chair to acknowledge you. Thank you. <laughs> Member, for dinner enough. <laughs> Member, for dinner enough. My apologies, Go Deputy ahead. Speaker. I'd like to invoke Standing Order 3210. In order, Deputy Speaker, yes, invoke 30 to 10 in order to allow the member for Grizzly an additional 25 minutes within which to complete his presentation. Members, question is that standing order for the 210 be invoked and that the member for Grizzly be granted an additional 25 minutes to complete his presentation. As many have that opinion, say aye. As many of our contrary opinions say no, I think the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Continue, Member for Grizzly. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you, colleagues. So, Mr. Speaker, it was an eye-opening day for me, Mr. Speaker, because I thought back to being, you know, on the campaign trail and seeing every Tuesday Madi Pwete, Madi Pwete, Madi Pwete. Despite the fact that this is what befell its government, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I had to explain to the people of Grosely in the Kazaba area, Boseju area, Piat area, Grand Rivier area, the Monye area, that is not a lack of desire to fix your roads. It's a fact that it's impossible to do it fiscally prudently right now, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we're seeing a porthole in budget, Mr. Speaker, increase, which means that, Mr. Speaker, we had to continue to provide those interventions in the different communities, and we ensured that persons were given some relief. But I'm still under tremendous pressure in the Kazaba area, the Boseju area, Piat, Grand Rivier, in every hole in Moshi, for roads and their development, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Monsitor to Rivermita Road has been in abeyance for 45 years, Mr. Speaker. It's a connection from Babono to Grosely, and I am happy that the member from Babono and the member from Castries North came to a meeting in Moshi to explain to everybody what the desires were on the way forward in connecting Babono to Grosely, and I think that has implications for Babono's township moving forward. And I'm very happy, I am very happy that the commitment is to get it done this year, Mr. Speaker. Absolutely, very well, very well. Still under CDP, Mr. Speaker, we're able to, well, Mr. Speaker, okay, I'm moving into CDP now. We're able to commence construction of a drain in Monsepa, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we did not have all the financing to complete the entire drain. That drain from Tadisha shop to in front of Mary Senor's house to pass in front of Rocket's home. But Mr. Speaker, we have started those works, which has significantly lessened the amount of water that flows directly into Lindy's home, Mr. Speaker. And so we are very happy about that intervention, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Nobe to Asu Canal road connection, Mr. Speaker. Again, under CDP. Mr. Speaker, I'm not the type of rep to do a project and end it in front of a supporter's home, Mr. Speaker. 
And so, Mr. Speaker, when I came in and I was given stories about a road from Nobe that started and it ended in front of a former supporter's home, Mr. Speaker, that really angered me. And so, we set off to start the work, the work required to join the Nobe Asukanal Road and connect and provide those people with that alternative. I want to thank Andy Joseph for his stellar work in the area so far and will continue to represent not just some people but all of the people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Borneo Road Rehabilitation, there are a number of secondary and tertiary roads that require attention, Mr. Speaker. And as we have said to our people, the initial fiscal space of government did not allow that. And so we'll continue to provide all the mitigation that we can. In Monia, we have started a number of interventions on the CDP to make roads more motorable, Mr. Speaker. You will see in Corinth as well a number of interventions. Inglewood, Mr. Speaker, we've been communicating with the people of Inglewood, Mr. Speaker. The community required some serious attention. It's just like the communities of Corinth, Faso Canal, and Bois Mr. Speaker, they continue to live in fear of flooding. Mr. Speaker, Inglewood was built pretty much under Mont Sepo. And so we have a situation where water continuously flows from Mont Sepo into Inglewood, Mr. Speaker. And so I constantly get calls from the, the, the Gidaris, Cecilia Gidari, and the interim committee to provide some relief. We have commenced work on the road, Mr. Speaker. We've commenced work on the drains, Mr. Speaker, and we certainly will be continuing this year, and we'd look for a long-term plan for the community of Inglewood, which was also visited by the member for Castries North. Mr. Speaker, Vesiqui Road construction, Mr. Speaker. The community of Vesiqui has also received some attention. I want to thank the motoring public for their patience, Mr. Speaker, as we dealt with the collapsed culvert a few weeks ago. This is expected to hold up very well. We are also able to do some work, and some port holding in the area, Mr. Speaker, and uh, we will continue to do as much as possible. The community has also seen the commencement of roads. One in particular is a community on the right. When you come from the bread, the bread area in that area, you will see the construction commenced on that road under, my, under our CDP. Mr. Speaker, during the financial year, we had a number of challenges in the Morshi community. And as indicated, the community required a number of interventions. And so, Mr. Speaker, we had a situation where the Deramo Tito Fair Road required a lot of relief. And we sent in the portholing unit to get that road fixed into the River Meter Bridge. And as a result, Mr. Speaker, the road is a little more motorable. But I'm happy that the Monsitor to Lafay through Rivermeter and through Magwitut will be given this attention. And we did not tell the people of Moshi and the minibus drivers, go and find a way and find a way to get the money to fix the roads. We as a government will get it done on their behalf, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we had some interventions in Durham. The court was given attention, Mr. Speaker. We know that is an area these individuals love to, to, to spend some time, play their football and gather on a Sunday. And so we are moving forward to the grass area where we are going to erect a gazebo under CDP. We're going to put some benches up. We're going to ensure that we have a toilet facility so we can have activities, social activities on the weekends in that community, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Riviermeter Bridge. Mr. Speaker, today I stand proud as the MP for Grosley on my efforts to reconstruct the Riviermeter Bridge. Mr. Speaker, we've had issues in completing the bridge, but no one can say with a straight face that I, as the member for Parliament for Grosley, no one can say with a straight face that I waited months and even years on end to start the process of rehabilitation in that community. Nobody, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, sometimes as MPs, we apply pressure. We make calls, we visit the site, we do all in our power to get the work done faster. Mr. Speaker, I've even wished that I was a contractor, but the work has not been complete. But Mr. Speaker, it is in stark contrast to waiting four years for Deramu Bridge, Mr. Speaker. And I want to tell the people of Rivermeter, Tido Fair, um, um, Lafayette, 
dear Amo, that just have a little patience. We are very close. The work has recommenced, it is ongoing, and so we expect very soon for the Rivemita Bridge to be completed and we can have some relief for the people in that area, Mr. Speaker. The community of Corinth was another area that requires some infrastructural interventions. We had a situation where we had a single parent dealing with a child that was wheelchair bound. We had to ensure that we, and we got a two strip concrete road for that community. That's next to the St. Hills. Ensure that we built a drain so that the community can get some relief, Mr. Speaker. We are looking forward to continuing this road that connects Corinth to Asu Canal, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we're also getting a lot of complaints from the people living in the Richard Frederick portion of the Corinth area. I have to say it like that because the road does not have a name. And for you to describe where it is, you have to say the road leading to where Richard Frederick lives, Mr. Speaker. When I came in as the member for Grosley, I was not surprised that the area was a mess, simply because of the doctrine and then one individual who lived in the area. And so, Mr. Speaker, I said to them that I, as the MP, would do all in my powers to assist them. And so we've started some road works, Mr. Speaker. We've commenced a concrete, um, a concrete road, and we've done the cleaning that the community has been begging for for a number of years, Mr. Speaker. The current road next to Boyo is another road we have commenced um, some intervention on, Mr. Speaker. In consultation with the community, we had a nice meeting and we charted the way forward for ensuring that the entire road was done. done. And we started with phase one, we did the drain, and we will continue all the way to the adjoining road, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we've also done, we've commenced some work in Twia. The original design would have placed the drain from the entrance of Mulke, AKA Yes I, and go all the way into the direction of Winjama. But we decided to take another direction, but we will come back and we'll let the people of Twia know that we'll continue to provide this assistance. Mr. Speaker, we've spoken at nauseam about the need for electrical lights in our communities, and I'm happy that the Minister for Infrastructure and the Minister for Finance have worked on a mechanism to ensure that we, the people of all the communities, can be safer, can feel safer, and walk to their homes safely, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under Head 36 National Security, Grosley Police Station, Northern Headquarters, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we know the history of Grosley. We know the numbers in Grosley, Mr. Speaker. We know the weekend numbers with the influx of tourists, the influx of individuals from the south coming to the north for entertainment, for leisure. And we know that Grosley deserved and needed a northern headquarters. And finally, I can say to the people of Grosley, they are getting their wish, Mr. Speaker. We've commenced the construction of the Grosley Northern Division, first off with the demolition of the Scouts headquarters, moving the police operations to Rodney Bay and Grosley Town, and we will see this financial year further construction of the Grosley Police. Mr. Speaker, the Grosley Police have had my attention. They've asked for vehicles the Minister of Finance have provided. They've asked for better working condition, and with this government, we are providing it to the Grosley Police, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we've not just done infrastructure work in the community. Mr. Speaker, we've undertaken programs, social programs, to get young people off the ground. And so, I will invite people from all over St. Lucia to join us at the Grosley HRDC, as we have our Youth in Dance program, Mr. Speaker. We have a lot of talent in Grosley, as we say. We have a lot of talent. And so we are nurturing the next generation of talent in our program, the dance program, Mr. Speaker. One o'clock, Saturday mornings, Grosley HRDC. Mr. Speaker, Music and Me and the CDP, Mr. Speaker, have used this financing to ensure that a paid program brings in the musical talent from Grosley into singing, Mr. Speaker, and enjoyment for our young people. Mr. Speaker, the peanut butter pantry. Mr. Speaker, many of our young people go to school without breakfast. Let me applaud Mr. Dr. Venus Cherry and the boys at Seaview who decided to come up with a peanut butter pantry at the HRDC 
get in contact with Corporate Grosile and Corporate St. Lucia. Get the financing to provide peanut butter, cricks, all of the crackers, milk, so that our young people in the community can have breakfast. And so on the CDP, I provided additional financing for that peanut butter pantry in the community of Grosily. Mr. Speaker, this year we are hoping to launch our youth in agriculture program throughout the communities. And I must say, Mr. Speaker, that Grosily has not been viewed as an agricultural community, but Grosily still has the largest pig farm in all of St. Lucia. And I'm very happy that, under, that the Minister of Agriculture has committed support to provide the feed to the people who need it at the best cost in the community, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we continue to ask for interventions for the ITC Center in Riviera, the ICC Center in Duramo, and Lafe to ensure that we can engage our young people in meaningful programs in the community of Grosley. Mr. Speaker, under Head 47, Ministry of Physical Planning, Land Acquisition, Mr. Speaker, the people of Montsepa has been waiting for the, for the land that they've lived on for a number of years. In some cases, persons have been in Montsepa in that community for 30 years, some cases 40 years. Mr. Speaker, after much deliberation, I can declare a few things today to the people of Montsepa. I must. Firstly, number one, almost zero representation was made on their behalf. Almost zero representation was made on behalf of the people of Montsepa before July 2021, except for the attempts previously made by the member for Soufre with regards to that land dispute, Mr. Speaker. I say almost zero. And the reason, the only reason I say almost zero was because the people said, leading up to the election, that they heard something was happening. But Mr. Speaker, I will move to two. The land belonged to the JQ group, who was willing to negotiate with the previous government. Willing to negotiate. And from the initial meeting, the initial meeting, we were told that zero attempts directly to them were made in five plus years. Number three, engagement negotiation commenced within three months of being elected as the MP for Grosley. Within three months, we met with Gordon Charles, Mikey Pilgrim, and myself, and we had meeting after meeting as it pertained to Montsepa. This was after five years of nothing happening in that community, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we reached an agreement with the Ministry of Physical Planning, and we are now ready to meet with the people to regularize, survey, and move forward. And so now, Cabinet has officially declared the area a protected area. And so anyone who attempts to move in will be moved out. But we have finally arrested this issue in Montsepa on behalf of the people of this community. And of course, I had some conversation with some people. And they, say, they said to me, Oh, the, bo the boss man, the boss man had come and make that happen. And you're referring to the fact that the member for Castries East during the campaign rocked down in that very community and said to the people of Montsepa, we as a government will work in your favor. And now they have all the evidence in the world that this government truly puts the people first, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, in the community of Corinth, we see in the lighting program, Mr. Speaker, the field being developed, Mr. Speaker, and of course, we are moving towards ensuring that a community center is placed in that area. Mr. Speaker, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries upgrade of, that's head 41, we see $700,000, Mr. Speaker, and I'm glad that Grosley is mentioned. We need it, Mr. Speaker. The fishers absolutely need it for years, We've been, they've been working under dilapidated conditions, and so I'm very happy I can go and look at Erski in his face right now and tell him that the, the help is on the way. I can look at all the other fellas in the fisheries and say to them, we are working in your interest. Fads for the Grosley Police Station um, Fisheries is also on the cards, and so that should work beautifully for them, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, under Head 42, over $300 for CMOS production. And a lot of people will say, grossly, CMOS production. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, even along the grocery shores, we have people like Pop Out and Bandit and the rest, they can benefit from their CMOS production as we professionalize this in the community. And so, Mr. Speaker, there is a lot more that we have done in the community of Grosely, Mr. Speaker. We have a situation in T Village where, again, no DCA approval, no planning approval, and these are all facts. But we just see all of a sudden, a few months before election, that construction has commenced opposite Bank of St. Lucia, next to the fire station. And when we get into government, we are trying to connect electricity, trying to connect water, and then we find in all sorts of issues. Part of the land does not belong to the crown. There is no approval. There's, and I mean the Grosley Council, and we've seen pictures of members opposite eating wings at the place, posing for pictures along the highway, Mr. Speaker. And now it is left to the Grosley Town Council to address all these issues, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I'm very happy that the team has discovered all those infringements and we are going through the process of a proper design with a proper gazebo, proper entrance and exit to ensure that we can have some entertainment there, better menu for people, and a proper activity in that area. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want to commend Jackie Trim, who has taken the lead on this project, and the rest of the council for their work. And we just, <laughs> we just looking to ensure that very soon we can rectify this situation. Mr. Speaker, let me conclude by thanking my staff at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports for their unwavering support during the financial year. Let me once again thank the women's organization in Grosley. Let me once again thank the constituency group in Grosley. Let me once again thank all the well-wishers. Let me thank the haters, Mr. Speaker, because they provide the fuel, Mr. Speaker. Every time they say something that is untrue, I go back on the ground. DPO Mati, na fe pli. Man ta bouvez ça. DPO Mati, na fe pli. And the people of Grosley know they've elected a hard-working individual in their best interest. And I have a team around me, a team of cabinet ministers, that will ensure that all is done for the people of Grosley. So, Speaker, I'm not complaining about the size and complaining about the population. They voted in droves, Mr. Speaker. It is my responsibility to be in front of the supermarkets to meet them. It is my responsibility to be at the Grand River bus stop, the Moshi bus stop, at the Grosley bus stop to meet them. It is my MP. <laughs> that was Emma's thing. I was Emma's thing. I, I stole that from the member for, for shows for Supre. It's my responsibility, Mr. Speaker, to be at every meeting, Mr. Speaker. It's my responsibility, Mr. Speaker. It's my responsibility to be at funerals, Mr. Speaker. It's my responsibility to balance all of this while answering my phone, Mr. Speaker. But I say to the people of Grosley again, I am not hiding. I am buried under a work that was left for me to complete on their behalf, Mr. Speaker. And I have not run away from them. I have not neglected them. I have not waited three years before coming back to them, Mr. Speaker. I may not have reached every household. I may not have reached every 30,000 of them, or 15,000 households, Mr. Speaker, in 18 to, 12, in, to, to 20 months. But that does not mean that I will stop. I will continue to work on their behalf, Mr. Speaker. As long as God continues to give me the strength, I will continue to work on behalf of the people of Grosley. I therefore support the estimates and expenditure for the financial year 2023-2024. I thank you.